Working at fan companies, the Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix and Googles of the world can be a huge move for your careers. From extremely high pays to free lunches, dental, medical and all the insurance packages to endless perks, there are huge benefits to working at these companies. But today in this video, I want to play the devil's advocate. My name is Aparna and for the last 10 years, I have worked at these big tech companies, including a fan company. And I'm here to highlight some of the serious drawbacks of working at these companies. Let's go. Number one, you will be a small fish in the big sea. This is a very obvious one. Most of these fan companies have thousands of employees and you will be working on a very, very small, obscure part of the product. If you're lucky, you'd be in the customer facing teams, otherwise you might be in an internal team building tools for the rest of the company. So what can you do about it? If you've landed a job and now you're here working at the company, how can you make the best of it? Number one, know your why. Why are you working here? And what is it that you want your long-term career goals to fulfill? I was passionate about building user-facing products. I wanted live feedback from the millions of users using the features that I was writing. Even though these teams were a little bit high risk as far as performance was concerned and the eyes on your work was concerned, I was happy about it because I knew that this was the fast paced career that I wanted. If you are passionate about building internal company tools that help other employees and you love getting their feedback, by all means, go build those tools because usually in an internal facing team, you'll have much more startup-y kind of an environment and you'll have more control over the technologies that you use. And being there might give you exposure to more cutting edge technologies as opposed to some of the legacy code base that the customer facing teams might be working with. Number two, even though these are big tech companies, the technology that is used can take years to update. For example, in 2013-14, Apple came up with Swift as a programming language for iOS. It took most of these big companies at least five years to start adopting Swift and deprecating their Objective-C code. This can be very frustrating if you want to acquire skills that are matching with the market and what the rest of the companies are doing. If you are only working on Objective-C for these next five years and you wanted to switch jobs, most of the companies by now would have moved to Swift and you wouldn't have much experience with the language. So what can you do about it? I'd suggest keep working on some side projects that use these new technologies that you wanna use and learn. If it's a public facing project with real users, that's even a bigger advantage. Another example of somebody taking the initiative to just rewrite the code base in Swift was this Lyft engineer who took up the whole app and rewrote the entire Lyft app in Swift over a weekend. Once he showed this prototype to his company, uh, they were all pretty excited about it and they were able to adopt Swift as a programming language for the Lyft iOS app. Not all companies could do it. At the same time, I was talking to Uber for recruiting and they said that there were too many claws that they had with Objective-C code that it was extremely difficult for them to switch to Swift. Another thing that you can do if you don't want to rewrite the entire app that you're working on, you can create modules with small pieces that are in the new technology and then figure out how to bridge the legacy code with the new modern code. Number three, most of your managers will be sitting in meetings back to back all day long. Now you can tell what is going to happen after that. They might not have a lot of energy to work with you on your future career goals. If that's happening to you, this video is even more important to you. This can lead to lots of miscommunication and confusion between you and your manager because they're not able to give you enough time and understand what progress you're making. So many managers I've seen in these companies have 15 to 20 reports. That means your career might be in jeopardy. If someone is so swamped with work, they are going to focus on parts of the team that are going to further their career first and then they're gonna come back to you. So what can you do about this situation? Well, communicate with your manager even though they might not have a lot of time for one-on-ones. Pull them aside during lunch or other times when they have a few minutes and communicate all the progress that you've been making. Let them know that you are a self-starter so at least they understand what effort you're making and what progress is going 
going on in, in your field because they might not be attending all the meetings that you go to. If this is the person that you were expecting mentorship from and they don't have enough time, then you have to be proactive and find this mentorship somewhere else. It could be another lead engineer, another manager from another team, or your best bet at this time if you want the manager to be your mentor would, to, would be to change teams. So keep an open eye that because this is a very common scenario and um, you'll find yourself in a situation where if the manager is too busy and you're not able to communicate, they might just assume whatever they want to assume about your work and your progress. So be careful when this happens to you in a big fan company. My next point is for all those workers who've been working in fan companies for way too many years. What can happen is that you can develop this company loyalty because you're working for Google and it's a cool product. Anytime you share with your friends or family that you work for Google, they'd be like, wow, cool, you must be so smart. And now you start attaching your identity to this company. What can happen down the line is that you almost think that your last name is Google and there is no way you'll be able to leave this company and go somewhere else and work because um, half of your life has already been spent here. Even though you might not be happy, you might be having weird thoughts and your career might have halted, you just cannot quit because you don't have the ability to. It's a lot of work to interview and prepare and you just are sitting in that comfort zone. You don't want to move, but this can hamper your career growth a lot and especially your creativity because it seems like there's there's a chance that you're unhappy in your career, but you just because of the inertia of moving or um, tying your identity with this company, you're not able to go anywhere. I have met so many unfortunate cases of employees that were depressed in the company that they were working on. They were thinking they were having suicidal thoughts, but they couldn't leave the company. They were not happy, but they just kept going. So what can you do about this? Know that a company is not worth your life. Ask yourself if you want this job or title and the projects you worked on written on your tombstone. If it's not that important, then know that you're capable of leaving a toxic work environment. Acknowledge that change can be hard and moving companies after many, many years of working in one place can be a tough pill to swallow. Speak to people who've gone through this and learn from their experience how they were able to make this transition smoother for themselves. Once you do a few of these exercises, you'll feel much more confident and comfortable to move on. Maybe find something that is a complete change of career or a complete change of scenery in the type of product you work on and give yourself that creativity boost when switching jobs or companies. If you're thinking of moving your big tech company jobs, I made a video talking about why it could be really beneficial for you to work in startups. So go on, watch that video and let me know what you thought about these points. Do you have any other hardships that you might have experienced in big tech companies to share. I know many of you are students and you're watching these videos thinking that Google, Facebook, Netflix are the most cool companies to work for. But I hope I've opened up your mind a little bit. And if you got a rejection from any of these companies, know that your life is not over and these are not the best companies or they might not be the best fit for you to work in. So um, once you know both sides of the story, you'll be able to make a much more informed decision for yourself. That's it for this video. I hope you stay happy and healthy and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.